Raider Sportsnet, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Welcome to Rogers Center. It's a perfect night for baseball. The roof here is open as it's a gorgeous fall-like night. As we wrap up August, the Tampa Bay Rays are in town for a four-game wraparound series. John Farrell, his presence is felt in that dugout. He has left the game last night in the eighth inning and finally had to concede. Went to the hospital after the game. He was diagnosed. And earlier this afternoon, Alex Antopoulos gave us the latest on the Blue Jays skipper. Just give you guys an update on on John. Feeling a lot better. He's at home. Uh, just needs to rest a little bit day to day at this point. Um, so you know he should be fine. It was pneumonia. We weren't sure exactly what what it was. He got examined last night. So uh, again, might be back tomorrow. Just to see how he feels. But he's feeling a lot better. We certainly want to send John Farrell our best wishes. Don Wakamatsu will manage the ball club tonight. Of course, he's got managing experience. He managed the Seattle Mariners. So he's going over the ground rules with the hitting coach of Tampa Bay, Derek Schultz. Home plate umpire is Bill Welke. He is serving as the interpreter of the ground rules here tonight. Louis Rivera will also be in the dugout. He is a coaching assistant, but because the Major League rules limit the number of coaches you can have in uniform, he is taking over as the bench coach tonight. And he was a manager last year in double A, so he's got that type of experience. Louis doesn't get to wear the uniform during the game. He gets dressed and watches the game with the eye in the sky, if you will, during the game. But tonight he gets to wear the uniform and be on the bench. This is the 12th game these two clubs have played this year. First time Tampa Bay has been at Rogers Center since May 19th. Take a look at the Mad lineup. Joe Madden's lineup, 70 and 59. The lineups are brought to you by TD Canada Trust. Banking can be this comfortable. Desmond Jennings at the top of the order. This is 24th start that's being recalled from the minor leagues. Johnny Damon, the veteran, closing in on a bunch of milestones for his career. Evan Longoria, after a very slow start, has really picked it up in the production aspect of his game. Ben Zobris, Casey Catchman, B.J. Upton, powerful Matt Joyce in right field. John Jason is back off the disabled list, and Reed Brignac will play short, and they'll face Henderson Alvarez for the first time. And he takes the mound for his first career start against the Rays, coming off the best of his first three major league starts. Last time out versus Oakland, went a career high. Six innings, gave up one earned run. He still ended up with his first loss as Gio Gonzalez was just a little bit better than Henderson. Through a lot of strikes made, the A's put the ball in play through a career high 107 pitches in that ball game. Scatter report for Henderson Alvarez, Ever, Alvarez is brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners helping homeowners challenge the hitters. He'll use his fastball. It's basically here it is. Hit it. Let's see if you can. The slider will get there. He is a work in progress if it comes to that fastball changeup, basically, and he's got the, the slider that he is working on, and I think he needs to pitch inside, and that's something he did against Oakland just a little bit better. Pitch inside, challenge him, and use that good moving fastball. Defense behind Alvarez is ever important because he doesn't strike out a lot, as Pat mentioned. In the outfield, it's Thames McCoy and Bautista left to right. Mike McCoy making his fourth start in center field. Lori Escobar on the left side, Johnson Lind on the right side, and Jose Molina will handle Henderson Alvarez for the second consecutive start. First pitch of the game is outside. Desmond Jennings playing in left field. Bouncing ball. Easy play for Lori. One quick out. That's a great point about the defense. They've got to be on their toes because Alvarez throws a lot of strikes. And that's something that's important for young pitchers. Throw a lot of strikes and use your defense. He's got a dramatic fastball where it really sinks as it comes towards home plate. And you're going to get a lot of ground ball outs. Everybody has seen him now. They know he's going to pound the strike zone. So he'll keep the defense on their toes. Johnny Damon, the veteran, takes the first pitch strike. Damon signed as a free agent with this Mariner, with this Devil Ray team on the 
in the offseason in February, just before the start of spring training. Boy, he's been a nice pickup for them. He certainly has. Remember that when Johnny Damon and Manny Ramirez signed with Tampa? Set the world on fire, the baseball world. And originally it was Manny was going to play left or DH, and he was going to switch around with Johnny Damon. But with Manny Ramirez retiring, I think that was a stroke of luck for Johnny Dan. Now he has settled in as the designated hitter. He has saved his legs, and he's putting together a pretty pretty good season. Johnny Damon had his eight-game hit streak snapped yesterday. Bouncing ball to Escobar. Boy, he's got a strong arm. Man, oh, man. He barely got a grip on that baseball. And he knows Johnny Damon still runs well, but he reached back for a little extra. Yeah, it looked like a changeup just by the way he was holding it. He had to come in around around the baseball and try and get in front of it, catch it on the run, and then throw it on the run because Damon gets that running start out of the box. I was talking to Unel today. I said, have you always had that good arm? He said, yep. I said, how did you get a good arm? He said, I used to stand at home plate when I was a little kid and try to throw the ball over the center field wall. That'll do it. <laughs> Evan Longoria takes a pitch inside. We mentioned Longoria has really picked it up. He started the season on the DL with a an oblique strain. Late on that fastball. Longoria still hasn't hit much for the average, but boy, the power numbers have come around. He's always been tough on the Blue Jays. He's a run producer batting third in the Rays lineup. Pops this one up. Should be playable. Lynn coming down from first in foul ground. What a quick inning for Henderson Alvarez. It took him just nine pitches to retire the race in order. been challenged with the bats of late. They haven't done much as far as offense. Top of the order, Escobar Thames Bautista. Jose Bautista is one of the real bright spots of late. His stroke is back hitting 317. Adam Lins had a miserable month of August. Edwin Encarnacion, Brett Lloyd, Kelly Johnson making his second start since joining the ball club. Jose Molina and Mike McCoy round out the lineup and they'll face the veteran James Shields. Who is the major league leader with nine complete games. He beat the Jays with one of those complete games. That was back on April the 24th, a nifty four hitter. And winning that game two to nothing. Is, he also beat the Jays three weeks ago, limiting them to just one run and seven and a third innings. Shields gave up a season high tying 12 hits his last start. You know, Escobar bends back from an inside fastball. We are seeing a couple of teams that have really been challenged to score runs of late. Yeah, the offenses have been struggling for both of these teams. Another bouncing ball. Brignac at short on the run. Escobar is retired. And if James Shields is on, you'll see a lot of that too here tonight. The scouting report for James Shields, he's got an improved delivery. Before it was side to side, now it's straight towards home. And I think that has really helped him with his control. He needs to command the fastball. He doesn't throw it by you, but he uses it to set up all of his other pitches and beware the changeup. It's one of the game's best changeup 
Reminds me a lot of Sean Markham's, who I have a lot of respect for. His changeup is outstanding. So is James Shields. Eric Thames, he's faced Shields in the past. Just two at bats. He's 0 for 2. Thames hitting 263. 27 extra base hits for Eric Thames. There's a single in his first at bat. Eric Thames has his first hit of the ball game. Let's take a look at the defense. This is the best fielding team in the American League. The Tampa Bay Rays, the fewest errors with just 57. Jennings, Upton, and Joyce in the outfield. Longoria, Brignac, Ben Zobrist, and Casey Jansen will form the infield. John Jason back behind the plate, and it's a welcome addition for the Tampa Bay Rays. They welcome back B.J. Upton. Has not started for three games with a right shoulder strain, so he'll man center field, and he's a good one. Upton with five assists in center field, and he's got a lot of range. Jose Bautista with a man at first. Bautista has a couple of home runs against James Shields. You can see Joe Madden, he's always exaggerating his defensive shifts. And once again, you can see they play Bautista to pull dramatically. And it's almost like they're asking him to hit the ball the other way. If he just rolls the ball to the right side, Blue Jays can play first and third. Strike right at the bottom of the zone. Who is this guy hitting? I don't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a new guy. Clean shaven, Jose Bautista. When you see this type of defense from a right handed pitcher, it's either we're going to pound you inside or we're going to throw you a lot of soft stuff to try and get you to hit into that shift. Bautista has a decision to make. Do I try and hit one through it, over it, or go the other way? I think he stays with his strengths. Just matches up against the shift. You can see he is pretty predominant with his ability to pull the ball. But this year, a little bit different in that he's got 20 hits to right. Earlier this year, he beat this shift a couple of times against Tampa Bay where he inside out at a few balls and just hit ground balls to the second baseman. That ended up being base hits into right field. So he can do it if he wants to. Just depends on where he is in the count and where the pitch is on the plate. He's worn out the raise this season batting 391. Another pitch right at the bottom of the zone. Bill Welke is called two low fastballs for strikes about taste didn't agree with either one of them that's where james shields lives down and again he'll use that fastball he's got great command with it doesn't throw it by you but he uses it to set up his other pitches anytime you see one of his fastballs up around the letters that's by design two and two one out there's that change up he'll throw it any time he threw it once Two and two, he's liable to come right back with it. Yeah, doubles up on it. Sometimes he'll triple up on it, meaning he'll throw it three straight times if he's got a good feel for it or if he's got a feel that the batter is looking for something else. Thames at first. Had a one-out single. Not running. Strike three call. Bautista and Bill Wilkie certainly aren't eye-to-eye -eye on the strike zone tonight. O.J. just letting them know that he thought that that one was either down or outside. From this vantage point, it looked like a good pitch. It looked like it caught the plate. This will really tell right on that outside corner. Caught plenty of the plate, but if anything, it wasn't low by any means. You can see it's above his front knee. But Jaso really made it look worse than it was. He pushed it out right. of his own. Two outs now. Adam Lynn and Lynn is anxious to get something going. We've mentioned he's had a tough month of August, but he is absolutely worn out. James Shields.
His average down to 257. But remarkably, look at the power numbers. 22 home runs and 73 RBI. Now, Lynn missed four weeks mm -hmm. with a back problem back in May. And then August is almost non-existent as far as offense, but he's still able to put up 22 homers and 73 RBI. And if he gets hot again, he's got a great chance to drive in 100 runs. Has a good look at that pitch. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a pitcher that you've hit well in the past when you're struggling. <laughs> like your cousin has come back to town saying, okay, everything's <laughs> going to be okay now. Uh, there is something about certain pitchers. One guy will stand in the box and see him big time. The ball looks huge. Another time, the same batter can go in there and it'll have no chance. Good rip at that ball. He found it back. Adam Lynn. On July 16th, he was hitting 304. All the numbers very representative of that good year, and then boy, things have really fallen off the table since. Home runs, just six home runs and 21 RBI since the 16th of July. Swinging at some bad pitches, a little bit anxious. There's time where he's sitting on 99 home runs for a while and. Looked like he was trying to pull the ball, trying to get the ball in the air, and I think the pitchers really took advantage of that. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. Shields will never allow you to pick up a pattern. Does a great job, and he's a little different than most major league pitchers. He developed the changeup in the minor leagues. He had throw 35 to 50 changeups in a minor league start. That's basically his go-to pitch throughout the minors. Breaking ball hammered to left. Desmond Jennings gets there. Lynn hit it hard, but right at the left fielder. Blue Jays get a base hit, but James Shields leaves one stranded. on Roger Sportsnet, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. It's a perfect Friday night here at Rogers Center. Baseball temperature is perfect. A little bit of a breeze blowing, but you really don't feel the effects. Ben Zobra steps in to face Henderson Alvarez for the first time. And get used to that. If you're watching Alvarez pitch for the first time, he's a strike thrower. Pitches with a lot of confidence. You can just see it when he is out on that mound. Not afraid to throw strikes, challenge hitters. 21 years old. Double A New Hampshire went eight and six and really finished up strong. Another ground ball. Kelly Johnson to his right. Backhands. Zobris is retired. Three ground ball outs already in four batters. 
Nice play right there by Johnson. Made it look easy. You'll get a lot of ground ball outs again with Henderson Alvarez on the mound. And by no means is he a finished product. He is a work in progress right now. Again, he started the year in A ball. And he has made three jumps to the big leagues. And this is going to do wonders, I think, for his confidence the last few weeks of the season facing these big league hitters. And if he can get them out. Casey Katzman batting 326 was fooled on that breaking ball. That was a pretty good slider. Yeah. That's the third pitch in the arsenal of young Henderson Alvarez, and that's the best one we've seen him throw. Change up 87 with the change up, and I tell you what, he's polished and he had the thrill of a lifetime last time the Blue Jays were in Seattle. He got to meet his idol, Felix Hernandez, the Cy Young award winner from a year ago. They both are from the same town in Venezuela, Valencia, Venezuela. He had not met Hernandez until the last trip to Seattle. Slider strike three. What an at bat for Henderson Alvarez. Slider to get ahead. Fastball fouled off. Slider to finish him off. And that's one of the things that Felix Hernandez talked to him about with that slider. Is you've got to throw it out in front. That's a pretty good one. A much improved slider since the last time I saw him pitch. Dramatically improved and it had late break and a tight spin and gets a left handed hit. BJ Upton a right hander will step in with two outs. First pitch strike. Upton had missed the previous three games as Pat mentioned he banged up his shoulder. Chasing down a fly ball. Good news for Tampa Bay to get Upton back in the lineup. He's not had a particularly good season with the bat but he's a big part of the defense for Joe Madden. The anchor in center field. Batting average just at 224. You get those types of swings from him. Shows you the kind of sinker that he has. But Upton can run. You make a mistake, he can knock it out of the ballpark. He's got 17 home runs. Oh, for his last 14. One and two, two outs. Upton wasn't quite ready. Asked for time, and it was granted. Second inning. Jose Molina didn't know anything about Henderson Alvarez till this spring. Pat Henkin said, Jose, I want you to catch Alvarez. See what you think. He knocked his glove off on the first pitch. Throwing that sinker, he said, oh, I remember Henderson Alvarez. <laughs> He's got that kind of movement on his fastball. Elevated a 94 mile an hour heater and strikes out BJ Upton. Henderson Alvarez off to a good start tonight. He's retired six straight, last two by.
Sharp makes bigger better. Blue Jays certainly have some home run hitters coming to the plate in this inning. Edwin Encarnacion, Brett Laurie, and Kelly Johnson. James Shields gave up a one-out single and then stranded Eric Thames on base. Another fastball gets away from Shields. Don Wakamatsu, just a reminder, he is the acting manager tonight. The skipper John Farrell is home resting. He's been saddled with a bout of pneumonia. We want to wish John well and a speedy recovery. 2 0. Oh. Popped up and out of play. That's where it becomes so tough to read James Shields. 2 0, oh, you think you got him set up for a pitch. He might throw something totally different. He's got four pitches. He could throw them at any time and count. Nine complete games. There's that great changeup. Late life on that changeup as it just disappears under the bat. Shields does not get the respect he deserves for his consistency. He's in an elite class of pitchers that consistently throws 200 innings. He's one of just five starters over the last four years that racked up 200 plus innings plus 150 strikeouts. Right back with a changeup. And Carnation strikes out. That's two tonight for Shield. His delivery is very simple, very compact. He doesn't come out of his delivery trying to overthrow pitches. The only changes that they made was try to get him coming towards home plate. And when you do that, you get a lot of strikes and a lot of strikeouts. That's another changeup that Encarnacion swings at. And you're right, you can count on him. This will probably be his fifth straight year of 30 plus starts. Brett Lowry, as he always does, takes the first pitch to get an idea what he's dealing with. First time he's faced James Shields, 13 games. He's at 341. Brett Lorry, a single and a triple in last night's game. Two for four, he scored a run and drove one in. Slider off the plate. He mentioned the five pitchers with four consecutive seasons of 200 plus innings and 150 strikeouts. Verlander, Sabathia, Heron, and Matt Kane, along with James Shield. Pretty good company. And you're right, under the radar. When you start talking about pitchers in the American League, you name all of those guys and John Lester, Josh Beckett, David Price. Left field high and deep. Jennings at the wall. This one is gone. Home run, Brett Lowry. Number five for the rookie. What's impressive about Brett Laurie is he's got a very short swing and the ball just explodes off of his bat. Shields wants the ball down and away. He gets it down and in right into the spot where Laurie likes it. The bat comes through, just thunders through. And gets it over the wall for number five. Classic home run swing right there. Kelly Johnson in his second game with the Blue Jays. Louis Rivera enjoying his time in a dugout. <laughs> Johnson goes to left field. Jennings got a good break on it. Makes a running catch on the warning track. That's Kelly Johnson's approach. Boy, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark to all parts of the field. 26 home runs last year, 18 more this year. And I think he's really going to love hitting in this ballpark. Ball really carries to all fields. That time just didn't get enough of it. it looked like an off-speed pitch. He just didn't get enough behind it. James Shields has always given up homers. That's 22 now on the season that the Rays right-hander has a lot. Jose Molina jumps on the first pitch, but Jennings has plenty of room. 
Molina's retired on one pitch. The Blue Jays are out of the second, but Brett Lower has put him out in front. His fifth home run on a 3-2. the conversation you see right there Hernandez is talking about Alvarez and his breaking ball had a baseball out there and he was saying he was telling him that you were throwing your breaking ball from behind your head you've got to get out there and you have to extend certainly was listening to him because we've seen him throw a couple of breaking balls here tonight were the best that we have seen in four starts and there's nothing like getting advice from a peer especially one that you idolize we mentioned they both Come from the same hometown in Venezuela. Felix Hernandez is only 25. Yeah. A young guy, but certainly a young star. And he talked to him. He asked him about his routine in between his starts. What does he do to get ready for his games? There's so many things that young pitchers have to learn about the life of a big league catcher or big league pitcher. Thought of a catcher there as I know you were, <laughs> <laughs> you were sympathizing with Jose yeah. right there, but he got hit pretty well with that foul tip. But Henderson Alvarez, you saw Louis Rivera, the third man in that conversation, and it wasn't a matter of translating. They both speak Spanish, obviously. But Henderson Alvarez was in such awe that he was reluctant to ask any questions. So Louis Rivera kept asking questions. Pat Henkin, the bullpen coach. Told Henderson, take a baseball with you and have him show you how to throw to the slider. And that is a dramatically different yeah. breaking ball. And Pat Henkin was thrilled that Hernandez would take the time to meet with the young guy, but it certainly had an impact. Matt Joyce, full count. Certainly can go a long, long way to have somebody like that talk to you when you're a young kid. I mean, it'd be like you and I talking to the guys that we idolized growing up and, and learning from it. Them taking the time to talk to us. Comes right back with a changeup, and Joyce gets a piece of it. Well, I'm just like Henderson Alvarez in that situation. If I would have had an opportunity to meet Willie Mays, I wouldn't have been able to talk either. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have just stood there and looked at him. <laughs> Would you have remembered to bring a baseball out? Uh, Maybe I don't back? know. No, then you're going to meet Willie Mays. I'm going. Huh? What? <laughs> I still can't talk to Johnny Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him at, uh, yeah. you know. Oh, it's uh, and and I can understand how Alvarez felt. Mm -hmm. He was dressed in his uniform at 12 noon, waiting for batting practice to start. That bat is shattered. Alvarez had to wait to let the barrel of that bat go past him. He knew it was coming out toward him as that bat shattered at home plate. So he had to wait and allow the barrel to pass him. And that's getting all in his kitchen. Talked about his fastball. He's got good movement on it. There it is. He's got a duck. 
as he makes his way over to first base to get that throw from Lynn. No, I ain't making sure that Alvarez has a chance to regroup. <laughs> I tell you what, this is his fourth game and he acts like he's been pitching forever. Chuck and Duck <laughs> as he gets out of the way of that flying object. John Jay, so the catch here will step in the box with one down. Goes after the first pitch. I think the Rays have already picked up on the fact that Alvarez is coming after him. Throws a lot of fastballs, and that's okay. That's where he will have to lean on Jose Molina to pick up that pattern, maybe start him off with something else. Second time through. We have already seen more sliders in this game than we've seen in any of his previous starts. And that's what you want to see continued improvement from young players and where you've seen it. In Alvarez. We mentioned in the open that Alvarez continues to get better with every start. We're much more comfortable in his surroundings. He finished up in double A on a real hot streak. He won his last four decisions. Over the course of five starts, he went 4 0 with a 208 ERA. And as the Blue Jays' management has done throughout this season, they have waited for the right moment to promote to the major leagues, and they wait till a guy gets hot. And when they brought him up, he was on fire. You just feel comfortable. You just feel better about yourself when you move up to that next plateau in your baseball career. He also might be one of those players. The higher up you go, the better you are. We have seen that for years and years. Sometimes guys climb the ladder, they go from A ball, double A, triple A, and they can't handle it. There's also guys who can go up and they just become better baseball players. That hit him on the back elbow. That slider broke inside. And oh, now look at Bill Welkie's calling him back. He's saying that that ball hit the back. He's going to call him back and he's going to show him that red mark. Well, it's not red enough for me. Well, I'm sorry. It hit the back. And he's going to look at it. I'll show you the bruise. And well, he said, nope. It's not red enough. But it looked like it hit his elbow. Yeah, it, it certainly did. We had this earlier about a swing and hitting a, a batter. He starts to swing at it and then checks his swing and his Clips him right on the elbow. And you can see where the bat is and where the ball is. It hit him on the elbow. Yeah, no, no question that it hit the elbow and it was not a swing. Now they're waiting to see if it's going to swing. Up. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. <laughs> it's the right call. Uh, Don Marcomazzi is going to come out of the dugout. And then Rakamatsu is going to argue, hey, you made the call. You were clear in your mind what the situation was. You called a foul ball. And now you're going to say just because he shows your red mark, you're going to give him his base? Umpires will go by the sound. In that situation, must have sounded like it. I think they have to wait and see if it hit the bat. If, if they call it foul ball, then he must have seen it hit the bat, right? I mean, that's the first thing I would think. But check swings are tough. Mm -hmm. But Jaso showed him his elbow, and we could see. Well, so we have the benefit of sound and tape. You see the home plate umpire raise his hands right away, saying foul ball. This is the one that's going to show you that is pretty certain that he hit him on the elbow right there. It's about a foot away from the bat. But it's difficult for an umpire on that check swing. You're concentrating on the bat. You hear the sound. It sounded like wood. It hit the elbow. Well, there's one way to fix that, and they can do it very quickly. Come on. <laughs> you don't want to do that. A little instant replay action. All they have to do is look up to us, and we would have told them, right? We're honest guys. We're going to give them thumbs up or thumbs down. 
Foul ball. Just like the old Roman days. <laughs> Reed Brignac, the shortstop, has not had a good season with the bat, hitting 191. Tampa Bay will play hit and run, even with the catcher. Big swing and a miss. This is one of the best teams at manufacturing runs in all of baseball. They can hit and run. They'll squeeze. They'll steal bases. The well, name of the game is to score runs. Yeah. And last year they did a pretty good job of scoring runs. They scored over 800 runs. And their offense wasn't particularly that potent. They just manufactured runs. Unfortunately, against the Tigers in that four-game series, they lost the recipe. They scored six runs in four games. And they lost three of the four games to the Tigers. Brignac in a hole. Get Brignac to swing at that so he can get it on the ground and get out of here. 94 miles an hour with late movement. Action on his pitcher, but it just pales off the plate. Two and two, one down. Jaso at first. Change up. And a good one. For Alvarez. He keeps making you shake your head. This is just his fourth start, and he's pitching like a veteran. Not afraid to throw that off-speed pitch any time. He did that against Joyce. He threw him a couple of change-ups that were fouled off and then sawed him off. Now with two strikes, gets Reed Brignac swinging over the top of that change. Back to the top of the order. Desmond Jennings, the left fielder, grounded to third his first time up. Molina calling Laurie in at third. Jennings has great speed. Wanted to make sure he doesn't play too deep. You see, just a step behind the bag at third. Jennings just looked down there at third base, and now here comes Laurie. Comes creeping in on the pitch. Jennings had a bunt hit down in Tampa when we were there at the beginning of this month. See Laurie well off the line at third base. Baseball hitters would call that pitch dirty. <laughs> that is a dirty sinker right there. You don't have much of a chance to hit it. And it's not about being on the corners or anything else. It's about knee high and then just disappears. 0 oh and 2. Desmond Jennings pretty impressive in his own right. He was drafted in the 10th round because he was such a talented football player. Most teams expected him to continue his college football career. Tampa Bay took a flyer and they've got a pretty good young player. Desmond Jennings was the 10th round pick of Tampa Bay in 2006. A terrific wide receiver. Took him a while to get his baseball skills down. And when Carl Crawford left this year, everybody assumed that he was going to make the team out of spring training and be their everyday left fielder, but he had to go back down to the minor leagues and get some seasoning. Little tapper on a breaking ball. To give you an idea how good Jennings was in high school, he was Alabama's Mr. Football runner up as a receiver. Second best high school player in Alabama. Then he went to a junior college, played junior college football in Mississippi, and had a terrific season. Led the nation with 54 receptions. Mm. He looks like a wide receiver. He looks like anything he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's a good-looking player. We saw him last year when he made his big league debut right here in Rogers Center. Got his first hit here. Had to go down to the minor league, polish off his game just a little bit more. His fielding and hitting of the breaking ball. It's that breaking ball high and deep to left field. This ball is gone. Off the second deck, Desmond Jennings, his sixth home run on a hanging breaking ball. Tampa Bay has taken the lead. Jennings showing some power and some speed, throwing 13 stolen bases that he's had. This is a hanging breaking ball. Here's the problem I have with that. He got beat by his third best pitch. He was tying him up with his fastball. Jennings didn't have a chance on his fastball, and he's got a good changeup tonight. He gave up the home run on his third best pitch. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And just because he had thrown a few better ones early in the game doesn't mean all of a sudden that's going to become his bread and butter pitch. Still his third pitch by a wide margin. Yeah, yeah. it's not a strikeout pitch yet. Johnny Damon. Ball in the strike. There's a changeup. Well, you're right about that, and that's a great point, and something that Molina will doubt himself for calling that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Alvarez is not going to shake to it, but he had thrown some good ones early on, but it's certainly not a pitch you want to throw in that situation. Not when you can do that. Right. I mean, you know, 95, 96 with movement, plus Jennings wasn't showing any chance of getting the head out. Desmond Jennings has some special talent. Jennings now hitting 345 with six homers. Another changeup and Damon is down. Two strikeouts in the inning, but a hanging breaking ball cost Henderson Alvarez a two-run home run. But he goes back to his very good changeup and strikes out Johnny Damon, but Tampa has taken the lead. Bay has taken a 2-1 lead on Desmond Jennings' sixth home run of the season. Mike McCoy, second consecutive start in center field. It has been reported that Colby Rasmus is on the DL. That's inaccurate. He will be on the DL tomorrow. He is in uniform on the bench and could theoretically pinch run if needed. There's a flare in the right. Matt Joyce. Over to his left makes the catch. With one out here in the third, let's check in with Jamie Campbell.
Yep. There's Kobe Rasmus on the bench, and he's got a wrist problem. He will be disabled tomorrow at the same time. Dwayne Wise, who was picked up by the Blue Jays, should show up. He's due to report to the team tomorrow. Nothing wrong with his legs. It's his wrist. And he can help the ball club tonight if he can pinch run. If this game stays a one-run game, close, he might have to pinch run. Bouncing ball, Longoria tips it, and Brignac can't get it. Longoria went after it, got a piece of it, and Brignac looked like he was going to be able to make the play, but Longoria has to go after it. Not sure whether or not he can cut in front of him. Anytime a third baseman can get over there and make the play, it's a lot easier than having that shortstop go in the hole and try and cut, go across the diamond with the throw. This is where the great range of Evan Longoria might have hurt him. Because he just can't come up with it. He just tips it right off the end of his glove. You see, Brignac was ready to make the play. Boy, they give Longoria an error on that play, and I really have a tough time with that. <laughs> How can that be an error? That's not an error. Exceptional effort. He barely got a piece of it. You're going to give him an error on that? <laughs> I'm not changing it. I still have a hit in my book. So do I. Eric Thames bats with one out. Good thing I didn't erase it. It's been changed to a hit. They must have a monitor down there. I hope with the the sound up. <laughs> Following the strike, Derek Thames. Thames had a broken back single in the first. Blue Jays over there. Head to head matchups against James Shields and hit him well. They have a 291 average against Shields coming into this game. He's 8 and 5 in 17 career starts against the Jays. There's a rocket into right field. One hop to the right fielder. Escobar stops at second. Thames is 2 for 2. He certainly looks comfortable hitting against James Shields. That changeup negating against Thames if he's got the good plate covers. That was a very quick. Swing, watch his hands stay back and then just rifle that ball in the right field. Or a great balance, he stays back and uses those quick hands. Thames two for two. Jose Bautista was called out on a pitch he thought was outside. Bautista is six for 19 against Shields with a couple of home runs. He has hit five home runs against Tampa this year. He's driven in five runs. So they've pitched to him with nobody on base. But when they get guys on base, they see a lot of off speed pitches. Jose sees it from him. Well, Joe Madden was the first that really started using the intentional pass to Bautista. Even when Bautista represented the tying run, Joe Madden has always been proactive in that department. He did it with Bautista. He's done it with Ortiz in the past. He'll pick out that one guy in the lineup and says, you're not going to beat me. 0-2. Oh Off-speed pitch. Really took something off that big breaking ball. Bautista has gone down on strikes twice. Again, runners on base, a lot of off-speed pitches to Jose Bautista from the Tampa Bay Rays. Breaking ball down and away. I think that's the first time that Shields has thrown on that pitch here tonight. Adam Lynn hit the ball hard his first time up, but he lined out to the left fielder. Breaking ball bounced up the middle. Zobris backhands and goes to second for the force out. Good play at second base by Zobris. With the backhand and fired to Brignac covering second. Blue Jays will strand a
Sal Fasano in his first year at Double A, also the manager of the year. Dorneau hit 317, 32 doubles, 19 home runs. And the team, the Fisher Cats, had a 71 and 60 record. Sal Fasano was the manager of the year. Boy, great accomplishment by that entire team. 378 on base percentage for Garneau. Team is 71 and 60, best record in the Eastern League. Kevin Longoria drives this one towards center field. It is high and gone. They mentioned Longoria has been on a home run tear. That's his 23rd of the season and his 12th in his last 40 games. Nobody has driven in more runs than Evan Longoria since the middle of June. He had 22 home runs last year in 151 games for Tampa. This is number 23 in his 101st game this year. One of those grooves drives it to the deepest part of the ballpark and out. First pitch swinging. File that one away. Tom Goy has been red hot. The average hasn't jumped, but boy, the power numbers are right there. Little tapper back to the mound. Zobris is retired on the comeback. One out. Evan Longoria came into this game batting just 234. He started out the season on the DL. He had a side strain, kept him out of the lineup. When we saw him, he was very tentative early in the season. Didn't have that commitment through his swing, and he is a healthy, much more dangerous hitter right now. The RBIs just keep going up and up and up. That's nine home runs now in the month of August. The best in baseball. He was tied with Curtis Granderson at eight, and now he has separated himself as the leader. Casey Kotchman struck out. Kotchman struck out on a slider down and in, and that may have led to the problems for. Henderson Alvarez, he threw a slider to Desmond Jennings and he hung it. And Jennings hit it out of the ballpark. I think it's easier for a right handed pitcher to throw a slider to a left handed batter because you really have a point of reference. You know you've got to finish it down and in. You can't leave it out over the plate. Against the right hander, there's really no target because. There's the batter and then the whole plate sits out there and there's nothing that you can reference as far as yeah. where I need to throw it. No, no visual for, for a lefty. You've got that whole back door you can open up and just throw it. Try and catch the outside corner. Big bouncing ball to second. Kelly Johnson. The limb, two down. Now that doesn't mean you can't throw it to a right hander. You have to uh, learn to do it. And, I think this is going to be again a great four weeks for Henderson Alvarez to learn what it's like at 21 years old to pitch in the big leagues. No, well, obviously the slider is a very good pitch right hander to right hander. But I think when you're learning like Alvarez that lefty gives you a better idea what you really need to do with it. It probably makes you focus on finishing. B.J. Epton struck out on a high fastball his first time up. Beats that two seamer right into his legs. Tampa Bay has scored three here tonight, and we are just in the fourth inning. That's half as many runs as they scored in four games against the Tigers. And they lost three of those four games at home. This team has played so well on the road, Tampa. Joe Madden's been trying to figure it out. He had a a day on the road or at home last homestead where he told all the players, I don't want to see you before three o'clock. I want to simulate like we are on the road because they play so much better when they leave Tropicana. Those are two tough pitches to take. The Tampa Bay, when you look at their record, 35 and 28 on the road, just 35 and 31 at home. And you would think the reverse would be the case as it has been for the last several years. Tampa Bay always had a good home record because everybody else got 
flat footed down there. <laughs> no atmosphere. The ballpark isn't conducive to a lot of excitement. And Joe Madden's team would take advantage of that. They had a definite home field advantage at Tropicana Field. If you weren't used to going into that place, it was like Minnesota back in the day when they played at the Metrodome. Upton takes a walk. Tampa Bay has turned things around and they got off to a slow start just like the Boston Red Sox. But you see since the 28th of July they are right there neck and neck with the Yankees. It's all built around pitching and defense for Tampa. They've got great starting pitching. They catch the ball the best in the American League if they could get a little bit more consistent hitting. I think the Rays would be just just OK. If they've got the best record since July the 28th the last month to give you a good idea how good their pitching has been their starters have pitched 91 of their previous 107 innings before tonight's game. That's 85 percent of the innings are pitched by starters. They have a consecutive streak going 10 straight games in which their starter has pitched at least seven innings. That'll make your job a little bit easier if you're the manager of that team. Make your job a lot easier <laughs> if you're a manager. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to figure out how you're going to get outs in the fifth and sixth. But they can pitch. And James Shields is the oldest. He's 29. Two outs. Up ten at first. Matt Joyce was retired on a broken bat. Grounder to first. He had his bat shattered. Alvarez needs to get back to getting ahead with that fastball. Yeah, I think he needs to forget about that runner right now and concentrate on that batter. Two outs. Thrown over a couple of times with Upton at first. Got great speed at first. Space umpire called it before it got to the base, and that's really not his call. No nope. the umpire's call until it passes first base. That's the home plate umpire's call until it gets to the bag. It's fair, fair. Yeah, I, I know he got it right because Lynn caught the ball in foul territory. Two balls and a strike. Upton with a bigger lead. Not running. There's a base hit into right field. Upton will jog into second. Bautista gets it back quickly. First and second, two down. A two out walk in a Matt Joyce base hit. Molina is going to the mound right now, and I would have a two full message for Henderson Alvarez. First, you got a runner at second. We got to protect the sign. Secondly, let's go with the fastball. Let's yeah. get ahead. Forget about the runners. There's two outs. This is the guy you want right here. But you're right. Make sure you're on the same page when it comes to the signs. The other thing, let's go. Let's attack this guy and get out of the inning. Alvarez gave up a home run on the first pitch to Longoria on a fastball, but he didn't put it where he wanted it. Left it up in the zone. Longoria has been hot and he knocked it out of the yard. John Jason, the catcher, he was hit by a pitch and controversy hit by pitch back in the third inning. First pitch swinging, lazy fly ball into center. Jason's retired. Tampa Bay adds a run on Evan Longoria's leadoff home run, middle of the fourth. Tampa Bay leads three to one.
Visit hitahomerunwithsharp.ca. Sharp Aquos makes bigger, better. Last time Edwin Encarnacion started off the inning, it was the second, and Brett Laurie went deep with one out. So it'll be Encarnacion, Laurie, and Kelly Johnson here in the fourth. Blue Jays trail by two. James has done an interesting job with that fastball. He's thrown the fastball up on the first pitch several times tonight just to put it in the hitter's mind, and then he stays away from it. I think there's a couple of hitters on the Blue Jays lineup who will swing at that first pitch high fastball. It looks very inviting. You feel like you can knock it out of the ballpark. A lot of times you just pop it up or swing right through it. He'll throw it up there for a reason. Shields looks like he was amused at what Jason was offering, and now they can't get together. <laughs> <They're half laughs> you remember what I throw, dude? <laughs> <laughs> How about that one? Okay. There's that high changeup. It is so good. He really sells it with his arm action. Hit or see that quick fastball arm action and then he throws the changeup and throws it out of the same arm slot as the fastball and the other breaking pitches. And again, he'll throw two, three, four times in a row. Popped up. EJ Upton takes command. He's the center fielder. One out. Brent Laurie back in the second. Fastball down and in, and you don't want to throw him that pitch. You might think you can get it by him, but he's so quick on the inner half. That's home run number five already. Sixty-six at bats, five home runs. He's got eleven extra base hits. That's one thing that uh, when young players come up, do, do they attack the ball? Do they have that ability to get extra base hits? Roy Shields and Jason are having a tough time getting together. They're going through the whole set of signs like the Kansas City Royals did when we were playing them the last time. No cutter missed off the plate. Shields is all about rhythm. And he likes to work quickly. Keeps the pressure on the hitters. We have seen him throw as quick a games as anybody in the league. He gets the ball, rocks and fires. And when Jason doesn't get to the right pitch, that knocks him out of his room. And it takes so long to get to it. Look how many signs he is going through. Borderline strike upstairs. That has been a point of concern for visiting teams since that controversy came out. Joe Girardi sparked it. Joe Madden even talked about a little bit about possibly Blue Jays getting some signs from the seats in center field. But so, nobody has proven it. It's died down. But because of that, all the catchers are now giving multiple signs and series of signals and in outside indicators oftentimes. We saw that with Salvador Perez in the Kansas City series. Three and one, one out. Shields is getting agitated. Yeah, and I think that works to the Blue Jays' advantage. Pitchers like James Shields, you're right, they, they like to get into that nice rhythm, good release point, work quickly, throw strikes. And they still can't get on the same pitch. He homered last time off of a fastball. Let's go with something off speed. Nolan Ryan would get to this point of a game and say, you know what? I'll call the pitches from the mound. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him do that in Anaheim one night when he was throwing to a catcher named Mike Hampton. That's a cutter. Again, a borderline pitch down and away. How do you give the signs? Such with his hat. With yeah. his hat. 
Cuts his hat in three different spots. Cuts the top, the logo, and the bill. Good changeup. All right, Shields can pitch, man. He's got a wide assortment of pitches, and he'll always throw you that changeup. Even when you fall behind like you did to Brett Lorry, you threw him a cutter for a strike, and then 3-2 Cambio changeup right there. And Lorry timing messed up just a little bit. Kelly Johnson lined out to left fielder his first time up. There's that curveball, a little bit bigger break, a little bit slower than that slide. Shields is ready for the next pitch. Change up. Three pitch strikeout. Back to back strikeouts. That does it in the fourth. Tampa Bay leads it three to one after four. Now it's time for Jay's Connected Update. Here's in the Rays. Hockey season just around the corner. I'm sure hockey camp is not too far away. So a good time to relax and enjoy a ball game. Top of the fifth inning, a 3-1 ball game, Tampa Bay with a couple of home runs against Henderson Alvarez. Desmond Jennings a two run shot Evan Longoria a solo home run to lead off the point. First pitch strength. Reed Brignac the shortstop struck out on a changeup his first time. We've been talking a little bit tonight about the development of Henderson Alvarez as a pitcher. There's a few other mechanical things that the Blue Jays are trying to do with him. You see he's got that turn. A la his idol Felix Hernandez. When he first came up here, he had a two part wind up. He would turn and then his hand would come out of his glove. And a lot of times the lower half was getting ahead of his upper half. What the Blue Jays have tried to do, they make it go together. Change up, strike three. Carl Brignac strikes out for a second time tonight. That's strikeout number five for. Henderson Alvarez. And it's working so far. Watch how he turns. The hand comes out of the glove all in one motion. And right there, that's a good change up high enough, and it catches the outside part of the plate. Alvarez gets ahead of Jennings with the fastball. Let's watch how he attacks Jennings this time up. He threw him a helicopter 
cement mixer slider and he hit a home run. I think he's going to go right after him. No swing according to Tim Sheedy down first. Anderson Alvarez is kind of spun out of his delivery and didn't finish over that front side. Two balls and a strike. One out. Change up. Good hop for Lori. Two outs here in the fifth. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. It's a big concern there in New York with the Yankees. It's the starting pitching after CC Sabathia. Last night, Phil Hughes started in that game against Rich Harden. He went just two and two thirds. Yankees scored 22, and he can't get a decision. Yeah. They were down seven to one to Rich Harden, and Oakland couldn't hang on. I guess you say they did worse than trying to hang on. <laughs> 22 runs the Yankees scored on 21 hits. Three grand slams for the first time in Yankee history in the same game. Johnny Damon waves with a changeup. Two more strikeouts for Alvarez here in the fifth. The changeup gets Damon for a second time here tonight. It's a 500 record, obviously. Look at his ERA and the opponent's batting average. Once again, reflecting the lack of run support given him by his offense. Who earned run average of two against the East? Yankees, Red Sox, Blue Jays. Throw in Baltimore, too. They can hit. The big game, James, his numbers pitches deep into the ball game. His one loss record could be a lot better. Yeah, if you want to find out if Baltimore can hit, just ask A.J. Burnett. No kidding. Tonight he is getting hammered by the Orioles. Jose Molina, first pitch swinging. Mentioned James Shields, part of a very effective Tampa Bay starter staff. Ten consecutive starts with at least seven innings from their starter. And there's a pretty effective left-hander, David Price. He's even helping clean up the dugout. He can do it all. You know, the thing about Shields is with the complete games, it's how efficient he is when he is out on the mound. No messing around, throws a lot of strikes. He averages 14 pitches an inning. That's the best in his career. It's also the best in the majors. 15, 14 pitches per inning. 
He makes quick work of it. This is another three pitch strikeout. He had one to end the fourth inning against Johnson and has one here to start the fifth against Molina. Three strikeouts in a row now. Shields has six. McCoy goes after the first pitch and lofts it high, but way back into the seats. Shields is an interesting contract situation for Tampa Bay. He's got a couple more club options. He signed through this season, but after this season, there are two more club options they can pick up. Actually, three club options, three one year club options. It'd be an interesting test for Tampa Bay to see if they will keep him. They've got young starters coming along all over the place. The, the Moore kid in double A is just tearing it up. That's why you heard James Shields' names a lot around the trade deadline. Cincinnati Reds supposedly interested in James Shields. They were going with, excuse me, Buck, with six starters at one time this year. Most clubs are having trouble finding four. Tampa Bay was embarrassed by their riches. They have another guy, Alex Cobb, a young pitcher who is very good. Boy, Jeff Neiman has been great lately. Healthy finally. Throwing the ball very well. How about Jeremy Hellickson? He lost two to nothing to the Tigers yesterday. He's a rookie. He had four strikeouts in the third inning yesterday. Austin Jackson struck out and reached on a wild pitch, and then he struck out three more guys. He ended up with four strikeouts in the inning. That's the first time Tampa Bay's had that happen. Mike McCoy pulls it foul. But one thing, Tampa Bay, it's really interesting, too. I mean, Tampa Bay is going to have some options, and you think about trading. They traded Matt Garza. Right. To the Cubs. And Jeremy Ellickson is a guy that they have control over. This is his first season. So they're not going to move him anytime soon. Went out and walked to McCoy. It's Canada's best selling car 13 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, let's see if Blue Jays can't get something going here. Back to the top of the order. McCoy reaches with one out. Escobar's one for two. He had a infield base hit off the glove of Evan Longoria back in the third. She has is tough to run on. Blue Jays really haven't been that aggressive on the bases of late. Yeah, they've lost their three key base stealers from early in the season. Rajay Davis with that bad ankle and the torn hamstring now. Bouncing ball. Brignac backs up, goes to second. That's all they'll get. McCoy is out on the force at second. They lost about 60% of their base stealers who are not even on the roster right now. You mentioned Rajay Davis, Corey Patterson has been traded, and so has Aaron Hill. So the, the base stealing has really gone down the last month or so, two months. Really haven't had that threat on the bases like they did at the beginning of the season. It was an integral part of the Blue Jays' offense, not so much just because they could steal the base, but. That threat of the steal was a distraction. We saw it early in the season, right up through the All Star break. How pitchers would be aware of the Blue Jays' running game, and that would lead to bad pitches and mistakes to the hitters. Not just stealing bases, but stealing runs. Thames goes after the first pitch and bounces out to Kotchman at first. James Shields leaves another Blue Jay on the bases after five. Tampa Bay out in front.
career high so far in strikeouts at the big league level with the six that he has put up. And James Shields doing his thing. Shields is coming off a game where he gave up a season high 12 hits in his last start. But tonight he looks very sharp. Evan Longoria jumped on the first pitch his last time up and drilled a home run to left center. There's that first pitch. Fastball for a strike. Breaking ball. High to center field. McCoy will watch this one sail away. McCoy initially thought the ball was going to stay in the ballpark, but it carried right out to center. Longoria has gone deep in back to back at bats. Another breaking ball. You know, and it's an effortless swing by Evan Longoria when he's at the plate. A lot like Brett Laurie, how the ball really jumps off of his bat. He's very calm at the plate, recognizes that it's a breaking ball, and he smokes at the center field. Give him 24 home runs now this year. That ball just kept carrying. It looked like McCoy thought he had a chance to make a play on the ball. Zobris pulls it foul. Boy, you talk about a contrasting style and hitting. Dave Martinez said, This is my guy right here. I knew you were going to hit. Tom Foley, the third base coach, that's who they're getting on. Dave Martinez said, I've been working with him lately, not anybody else. <laughs> In fact, I've been working on them all month. <laughs> Tom Foley has been with the race since day one. Former Expo came over the Rays, worked in the minor league system. He's been on Joe Madden's staff as the third base coach. This is where a young pitcher like Henderson Alvarez has to slow the game down right here. Looks like he's trying to rush through it now after giving up that third home run of the game. And there's a walk to Zobris. No, called it a strike. Called it a strike. Then Zobris doesn't show up the umpire. Thought that that one's outside. He's got a great eye. Whoops. Yep. Full count. Nobody out. We are in the sixth. Zobris pops it into left Thames. Over in the gap makes the catch. Fans, a reminder you can follow the Jays online with Jays Game Zone and chat live with Sportsnet personality Shide of Edie and Mike Wilner. All on sportsnet.ca. So if you're watching a game, you have a question, just log on to sportsnet.ca. Check out Game Zone. Shy Davidi and Mike Wilman will break it all down for you. Casey Kotchman takes one outside. Evan Longoria has two home runs tonight. Second multi home run game this season, his eighth career. But he is certainly a big part of Tampa Bay's push toward the postseason. It's good to see him hot now if you're a Tampa Bay fan. Still trying to break down Henderson Alvarez. Alvarez only given up four hits, but three of them have left the yard. You're right about it. It looks like Alvarez is a little bit rushed right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of difference between being quick to the plate and rushing to the plate. Good pitch there. Again, a lot of it has to do with the turn and the arm angle, so they work together. Make sure he gets that arm up before he starts heading towards home plate with his delivery. A change up man Kachman laid off. Casey Kachman will be on base for the first time tonight. Chris Walton coming out of the dugout, and at that same time, the Blue Jays bullpen is going to work. 
Henderson Alvarez pitched six innings his last time out against the Athletics. He threw a total of 107 pitches in that game. Right now he's at 98. Gave up seven hits but just one earned run in that game. Tonight he, I think he's pitched a fantastic game. He's just made a couple of mistakes with his third best pitch. Youngster Joel Carino was impressive in his only major league appearance. Starts to loosen up. B.J. Upton pops it down the left side. Lori quickly over. Makes the catch. Gets the ball over to Kelly Johnson to keep catchman at first. B.J. Upton retired on a pop foul. Emerson Alvarez gets in the kitchen of B.J. Upton. It's a soft liner down the left field line. And there's that athleticism that we have been watching now the last couple of weeks from Lori, the third baseman. Wasn't it that high? Two young third basemen, obviously, Evan Longoria, the more established of the two, and they play a different style. Longoria, very smooth actions. Brett Lori, very aggressive. But similar results. Similar the way the ball comes off the bat. Talking about that earlier today, Longoria, the way the ball comes off his bat, it just carries. Same thing with Brent Lord. Bounce back to Alvarez. Joyce is retired, and Alvarez gets out of the six, but Evan Longoria, second home run of the night, Tampa leads by three. RogersOnDemand.com. You can take your Jays anywhere with you with Rogers on Demand. Blue Jays got to get something going against James Shields. He has settled in nicely here. Through five innings, Blue Jays have managed just four hits and a single run off Shields. First pitch breaking ball for a strike. That ball had late break on it. It looked like it dropped over the inside corner very late. And Bautista saw it out in front, and it was still probably inside. Gave up on a little bit. It looked like it handcuffed Jaso, the catcher. That one went behind Bautista. Another curveball that really backed up. The pitch that he struck him out with his last time up. Now he's liable to go anywhere. Remember, nobody on base. Tends to challenge him just a little bit more. Change up. 
Three breaking balls and a changeup. Shields has a three run cushion here. Another breaking ball. He saw Shields look up to his right. Pitchers are into a game, but every once in a while they look up and see what the count is. Mm -hmm. Look up on the sideline, check the scoreboard just a reminder. Okay, it's two and two. Now what am I going to do? He has thrown that pitch very effectively all night long. Just using it to set up his other pitches. Again, he doesn't throw it by you, but he uses it to back you off the plate and then come with something off speed. Throw it up high and then throw a change up. There it is. Slow curveball. Bautista goes down for a third time tonight. Fast Another breaking ball. Fastball up and in the prior pitch to just push him back off the plate and then goes to that breaking ball for the strikeout. And he's got Jose way out front. I love the arm action that he throws that curveball with. It's just like the changeup. It's just like the fastball. And you get a lot of those type of swings way out front. Adam Lind. Lind has gone 0 for 2. Field his choice in a lineup. Give you an idea what Jose Bautista thinks about his night. Good changeup. Shields can be frustrated, and now Bautista, somebody's been thrown out. Bill Welke from home plate threw somebody out, and here comes all the equipment as Bautista evidently has been tossed out of the game. That's going to cost him. Hasn't been happy with the strike zone tonight. He let Bill Welke know it. Got thrown out of the game, and then the equipment started coming on the field. Welke heard something from the dugout and threw him out right after Bautista had smashed his bat up against the back of the dugout. But they have had words since the first at bat way back in the first. To right field, Matt Joyce on the warning track and will make the catch just in front of the wall. Lynn just missed it. That slow breaking ball just out in front of Ben. Just a little bit, got it out in front. You see, Shields knows that he got away with one. Adam Lynn drifts to the ball just a little bit and hits it off the end of the bat. Oh, so close to the sweet spot. He thinks he has enough of it. I thought he got enough of it down the right field line. But then once it got into the outfield, it just died in front of the wall. Lynn had five career home runs against Shields. Thought that was number six. Edwin Encarnacion. Mentioned Tampa Bay has had a streak of 10 consecutive games in which their starter has gone at least seven innings. Sharply hit, but right to Brignac it's short. Three up, three down in the sixth. The Blue Jays go quietly. Shields is shutting them down on just four hits.
ejection. And then he was tossed and threw some things on the field. Mark Tien comes off the bench to take over defensively here to start the seventh inning. And it'll be a new pitcher as well as Henderson Alvarez will be finished here tonight. Joel Carino also up from double A. He came in the other night in his first major league action and got three and a third innings, gave up four hits. I thought he looked really well. He threw his fastball for strikes. He's got a little bit of a slider and a changeup, but he'll come right after you. No fear on this young kid when he got into the ball game the other night. His fastball has got a little bit of a sink up to it, like Henderson Alvarez fastball. James Shields, on the other hand, through six innings, he has struck out seven batters, giving up just one run. Shield going for his 12th win of the season. Jan Jaso, the catcher, takes the first pitch strength. Carino didn't have the raw velocity of Henderson Alvarez, but he's got dramatic movement on his fastball as well. Certainly does, and it's free and easy as you watch him on the mound. He's got a nice delivery. The ball comes out. He too is a work in progress, a young player who started this year in eight ball. He moved his way up to the big leagues. Blue Jays getting a chance to look at him over the last six weeks of the season. He's got a lot of confidence in his slider. He'll throw that slider in time, and it's a strikeout pitch for him. Carreno was a starting pitcher in double A for the Fisher Cats. He went seven and nine, but had a very good ERA at 341. He also had 152 strikeouts. Breaking ball high and deep to right. T and back looking up. This ball is gone. John Jaso has gone deep. His fourth of the season. The fourth Tampa Bay home run tonight. Looked like a breaking ball to John Jaso. Just his fourth home run. Of the season, he spent some time on the disabled list. Jaso gets the breaking ball there and hangs out over the middle of the plate, and he doesn't miss it. Hits it over the bullpen in right field. Boy, with two strikes, you better not throw a breaking ball in the strike zone. Most American League hitters, they'll shorten up and put that ball in play. You've got to have a strike the ball, breaking ball, one that looks like a strike and breaks out of the zone. There's a line drive in the left. Thames plays it on a hop. Brignac has his first hit of the night. Carreño has been greeted rudely by Tampa Bay. Pitching line for Henderson Alvarez as he finishes up his fourth big league start. Six innings, four hits, three of them the home runs accounting for all the road home runs against him tonight. A career high in strikeouts with six. Henderson Alvarez looked a little bit better tonight than he did against Oakland. Dealing with a pennant contending ball club. And one that has a couple of hot hitters. Evan Longoria with a couple of home runs. And this man right here, Desmond Jennings, his two run home run got Tampa Bay off and running. Brignac at first with a single. Ball on the strike. We're in the seventh inning. Tampa Bay, we mentioned how challenged they have been offensively. They scored a total of six runs in the four game series against the Tigers. Tonight they have scored five. They come into this game 11th in the American League in batting average. Foul ball. But that's not what they're about. The batting average. They are third in walks behind the Yankees and the Red Sox. 
They are third in stolen bases. And tonight they're showing their ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. I mean, they lost Carlos Pena to free agency a year ago, and he was a big home run threat. Didn't hit for much of an average, but he was a big contributor to the offense. Tampa Bay at the start of play tonight, nine and a half games back, third place in the AL East. Way outside. Tampa Bay has a very challenging schedule. Coming into this game tonight, 31 of their final 37 games will be played against teams with a record of 500 better. They're going to play a lot of good teams down the stretch. Only the Orioles sub 500 in their schedule. They get the Yankees and Red Sox plenty the next month. Now the standings: Red Sox 30 games over 500. Yankees they didn't score a lot of runs, but again tonight they're. Starting pitching is getting hammered. Last night it was Phil Hughes. Tonight AJ Burnett. Two and two. Breaking ball called strike three. Jennings is retired. First out of the inning, and he knew it too. Breaking ball by Carreño. Freezes the right-handed hitter and it splits the plate. Seven strikeouts now tonight for a Blue Jay pitcher. Johnny Damon grounded to second. Kelly Johnson to Escobar back to first. Not in time. Boy, it looked like Damon was just a bit late getting to first. I thought they had turned two. You always have a chance when you've got that arm of, you know, Escobar turning it in the middle of the diamond. Kelly Johnson does a good job. The ball wasn't hit that hard by Damon. Johnson gives him a good feed, and here comes the rocket across the infield. But first base umpire, the crew chief, Tim Cheetah, calls him safe, and it's a good call. That yeah, sure was. You get a second look at it, and Damon was past first base. So the red hot Evan Longoria will get a chance with Damon aboard and two down. The average doesn't reflect, reflect the impact that Longoria's had. When we first saw him this year, he was just coming off the disabled list. First game back was against the Blue Jays down in Tampa. You could just tell his timing was off. Just wasn't there, but he started heating up. In June. And he hasn't slowed down. 11 of his last 13 extra base hits have been homers. Had two homers in the Tiger series. Was that breaking ball that Carreño started right at Longoria's hip? Evan Longoria's not getting a lot of hits, but he's getting big hits. Two and one, two down. Bounced to short. Payment is four stop. But John Jay so tacks on another homer. 5 1 Rays.
sportsnet.ca slash magazine. Look in there. It's going to feature a lot of great articles, some fabulous photography. Sign up quickly to get your copy of Sportsnet magazine. Bottom of the seventh inning. Brett Laurie will start things off against James Shields. Laurie's one for two. Homer in his first at bat takes a first pitch strike. Shields pitching here in the seventh has thrown just 78 pitches. Change up. You mentioned how efficient Shields has been throughout his career, and he's doing that again tonight. 14.3 pitches per inning. That's the best in his career. Strike three called. Another three pitch strikeout. With one out here in the seventh, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Oakland hasn't had any trouble scoring runs since the All Star break. And they had a terrible start to their season offensively. Kelly Johnson has gone 0 for 2 tonight. Blue Jays with just four hits against James Shields. Eric Thames has two of those four hits. Ball in the strike. Kelly Johnson talked about coming to the American League and said, This is the get it ready league. And he did. He got it ready and singled into center. Get the bat ready and swing because the pitchers will challenge you here. In the olden days, there was a lot of breaking balls in here. They're going to challenge you. Johnson will pick up his second hit as a Blue Jay. Single right back through the middle. Jose Molina has been a very effective first pitch hitter all season long. 0 for 2, Molina's average has dipped under 300. Shields trying to make it 11 consecutive games by a Rays starter pitching at least seven innings. That's a great stretch. Breaking ball for a strike. Anytime you get your starter pitching that deep in a ball game, you really have the advantage when you do go to your bullpen because then you pick and choose who you want. You got the matchups that you need. The righty versus the righty, lefty versus lefty. And you only have a couple of innings to do that. Most teams have a closer. So really, it's just one inning if you have the lead. He has nine complete games again. That's more than 25 teams. Look at David Price. It's like he's at a movie. <laughs> <laughs> he got a bag of popcorn sitting there watching James Shields do his thing. Well, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> you come here often? <laughs> Does anybody have as much fun as that guy? Well, I tell you what, Dan, we have heard a lot of great stories about his enthusiasm. He's the biggest cheerleader on the team, rooting for everybody all the time. You know what else, Buck? It's his birthday today. Yeah, maybe that's why he's having a little popcorn. 26 years old today. <laughs> Two and two to Molina. Fouled on. Fans here at Rogers Center recognized it was his birthday. Bunch of folks down there were singing happy birthday to him, and he's got a happy birthday set of balloons. And he tucked the balloons in his back pocket. Bounce toward third. Longoria waits on it. Goes to second. Johnson and Molina beats out the return for Kelly Johnson's retired at second. Longoria said, you know what? I know Molina doesn't run well, so let's see if we can't turn two. Yeah, you got to take a shot at it. Playing deep, he has to back up on the ball, get it on a, the big hop. 
Kelly Johnson did a good job of going in there and distracting Ben Zobris. The ball just wasn't hit hard enough to turn two. Two down for the number nine hitter, Mike McCoy. Goes after the first pitch. Blue Jays have had a tough time scoring runs tonight. The Blue Jays three four and five hitters have gone 0 for nine with four strikeouts. Those are the guys you need to drive in runs and it's just been a little tough stretch for them. Bruce Chen Jeff Francis two left handers beat them in the Kansas City series. They lost two of the three games to the Royals. Ran into some good pitching out in Oakland also. Gio Gonzalez pitched the whale of a game against them. Good Harden, Gio Gonzalez, Guillermo Moscoso, and Moscoso took the tough luck loss. Lost one to nothing. Luis Perez picking up his first win as a starter. Anticipating that Shields was going to throw it to the plate broke early, and Shields just stepped off, and they tagged Molina out at second. That's how the Jays will end the seventh inning. Jose Molina just guessing with Shields, and Shields calmly steps off and then throws to Zobris for the putout. He no hit the double A team tonight, so McGowan didn't have much to work with, but he had another good out. Yeah, good news is Dustin McGowan is working his way back to Toronto. I think we'll see him in September. Four and two thirds innings, just three hits, two and runs, four strikeouts for McGowan. The bad news is they got no hit. But anytime you see Dustin McGowan back on the mound and going deeper and deeper into the ball game, that's a good thing. If everything goes according to plan. Dustin McGowan will make one more start and that'll take place on the 31st of August and then keep your fingers crossed he could be right here with the Blue Jays when the roster expands September 1st. Ben Zobris pulls the first pitch foul. Joel Carreño pitching his second inning of relief. Carreño came into the game in the seventh and gave up 
a solo home run to leadoff batter John Jason. Little comebacker back to the mound. Selling card 13 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Casey Kotsman has gone 0 for 2 with the walk. Tampa Bay's hit four home runs tonight. Third time this season, the Blue Jays have given up four home runs in the game. They gave up four to the Red Sox here on June 12th, and then. Four to the Orioles on July 26th. Both of those games were ugly games. Boston had 17 hits, they scored 14 runs. Baltimore had 16 hits, they scored 12. This one is still within reach. Sure. John Jaso's fourth home run of the season was the Fourth home run of the ball game for Tampa Bay. Three and one to Casey Kotsman, the first baseman. Now they come back there. Two outs here in the eighth. We've had a few of those tonight, and I think that shows the sinking fastball first from Henderson Alvarez and now from Joel Carreño. Those comebackers to the mound, that's four times tonight that the Rays have hit one right back to the mound. David Price is hoping it's a double feature tonight. Got a big bag of popcorn. He is a kid boy. He <laughs> loves baseball. He loves his teammates and a pretty good pitcher. He was the first overall pick in the draft in 2007. They got some pitching staff. We will see him on Sunday. Afternoon here. Price will go up against Brandon Morrow. That's game three of this four game wraparound series. Reminder it's a four game series Friday night, two afternoon games over the weekend, and then Monday night, the fourth of the series. Two and two. Popped up down the right side. Mark Tian gives it a look, but it's well back out of play. Tian is in right field in place of Jose Bautista, who was ejected after his at bat in the sixth inning. You're just joining us, Dwayne Wise has been picked up on a waiver claim by the Blue Jays. He will be here tomorrow and be activated. At that time, the Blue Jays anticipate putting Colby Rasmus on DL with that wrist injury. If you've not heard Travis Snyder, it sounds like his season is over down in the minor leagues. He has tendonitis in his right wrist, which will need four to six weeks to heal. Strike three call. Breaking ball. Catches BJ Upton looking. Joel Carreño has a one, two, three, eighth inning. Blue Jays trail 5 1. Time for a connected update. Here's Jamie and Greg live in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio here at Rogers Center.
off on kids tickets the next junior Jay Saturday will be tomorrow Jays and Rays game two game will start at 107 p.m. kids 14 and under receive 50 percent off tickets to all Saturday home games 200 outfield and 500 level seats only call the Blue Jays directly at 416-341-1234 log on to bluejays.com and stop by most Rogers plus locations you are running out of opportunities only three more Junior J Saturdays after tomorrow. Mike McCoy jumps on the first pitch and singles back into center field. That starts the Jays' eighth inning. Good start against Shields. He now throws into the eighth inning, so the streak is alive for Tampa Bay throwing at least seven innings. It's 11 straight games now, and that matches the Seattle Mariners of 2003. It's the last team to throw 11 straight games by their starter with seven innings or more. Interesting pitching staff for the Seattle team in 2003. Jamie Moyer, Freddie Garcia, Ryan Franklin, Joel Pinheiro, and Gil Mesh. They all made 32 starts. They all threw strikes. They all worked quickly. They didn't overpower you. A lot like some of the pitchers on this Tampa Bay team. David Price would be the only guy who'd really be called a, a power pitcher. Mike McCoy got hit on that pickoff to first base. Not sure where he got hit, but the ball got away from Kotsman as he never put a glove on. Shields' throw was into the base runner. Not sure where it hit McCoy. Shields has a very quick move over at first base. This one will tell you where he got it. Right in the helmet, isn't it? Like Kotsman reached right over his helmet. Like right. hit him right in the back of the head. Oh, and two. McCoy at first, nobody out. Eighth inning, Blue Jays need to get something going. They're running out of time. Shields making his. 18th career start against the Blue Jays. He's eight and five, but he's two and zero oh this season. And he has beaten them six out of the last eight times that he has faced them. He has found something against the Blue Jays to his liking. We know Shields goes deep in the ball game. He leads the American League in complete games by five. He has nine complete games. Well, there's another good changeup. Escobar is down on strikes. One out here in the eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. Of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Eric Thames, the only Blue Jay hitter that's had a good night against Shields. He's two for three. Shields has nine strikeouts now. You know, his previous best in terms of complete games in a season, three. He did that in 2008. Three times that now this year. Probably won't get a complete game here tonight. They have some action in the bullpen. He's over 100 pitches now. Joe Madden, by getting his starter into the eighth inning, makes his job a lot easier. Backdoor breaking ball for a strike. 
Well, Joe Madden's now trying to figure out how he can close ground on those front running ball clubs and get into the postseason. Or he's going to try to manage his starters, make sure they don't run out of gas down the stretch. He and Jim Hickey work very well together, trying to map out the workload for the starters. You mentioned earlier they used six starters for a while. That that helped to keep the innings down. The last two weeks of the season, they play Boston. Another backdoor breaking ball. Strikeout number 10 for Shields. Here, Baines doesn't think so. He thinks that that ball was outside. Not real sure about this, that one. And it, he's right. From the overhead look, it looked like it was on the chalk line of the right handed batter's box. But the last two weeks, they played Boston four times and the Yankees five times. Mark Tian batting for a first time tonight. Tian came into the game after Jose Bautista was ejected. Tian took over defensively, top of the seventh inning, right? Double barrel action for Tampa Bay. The right hander is. Joel Peralta, the left hander, is Jake McGee. McGee, former starter, now working out of open, pitching very well. Teen's got good numbers against James Shields. He's 10 for 29 with two homers. Those, those numbers come as a regular. Mark Teen's been a regular. Up until he broke his finger last year with the White Sox. And now has to learn to come off the bench and get your hacks when you get your chances. Breaking ball and Jason will throw to first base. Tian is retired. Another strikeout. After a leadoff single, Shield strikes out the side in the eighth. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected, here's Ken Reed. Another breaking ball to center field. Multi home run game for Evan Longoria, given 24 on the season, and that has helped the Rays to a 5 to 1 lead. Longoria, he came up just at the right time for Tampa Bay. As he has driven in two tonight, two solo home runs. Third pitch of the night for the Blue Jays will be the left-hander Will the Desmond making his fourth appearance since being called up from the minors. A couple of lefties in the bullpen for John Farrell. One of them Rami Lewis, the other one Will the Desmond. He's got a good arm. He has hit 95 miles an hour on the radar gun. But he needs to throw a little bit more consistently in the strike zone. Some lefties coming up in this inning, so Ledesma is here to. Set him down. 
Matt Joyce will start things off. Joyce one for three tonight. Grounded out the two times. Big swing to miss. Joyce Jaso Brignac. Three left handed hitters to face Will Ledesma. One and two to the leadoff batter here in the ninth. Tampa Bay with a 5 1 lead. We had mentioned coming into this game, the Rays have scored a total of six runs in their previous four games. Another broken bat. That's a fair ball, and that's going to be extra bases. Joyce around first, headed for second. James digs it out and Matt Joyce a broken bat double just inside the bag at third. Sometimes this game just isn't fair to you. Ledesma makes a good pitch a two strike pitch to a left handed hitter breaks his bat shatters his bat. What does he get for it. A man at second base and nobody out right off the end of the bat. Right down the left field line nothing the Blue Jays defense can do about that. 25th double of the season, and Matt Joyce will take that one. He has had two bats explode in his hands tonight, but that time it turned into a double. So Molina out to talk to Ledesma with a runner at second. John Jaso had an interesting night. He got hit by a pitch that was originally called a foul ball by Bill Welkie, the home plate umpire. And then Welke was convinced by Jaso that the ball hit him on the elbow and was awarded first. And then he homered in the seventh. But Desma has been put in this situation because of the three left handers at the bottom of the order. As you mentioned, Pat, he made a good pitch to Joyce, but. You can't guard against a broken bat double. Yeah, nine times out of ten, that's going to be either right back to the mound or a little soft dribbler to the left side of the infield for an out. So now you got to pitch out of that leadoff double. Popped up McCoy coming in a few steps. Jason's retired. With one out in the ninth, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Mike Sosha has juggled his pitching rotation for this series. It's a big series, obviously, as the Angels are trailing Texas. Los Angeles has won six in a row. The Rangers had lost three in a row coming into the night's game, and Sosha understands the importance of this series. He's going to take his three best starters and move them up a day. So they will be working on three days rest to try and overtake Texas. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Well, he has moved here and he starts tonight, and then Weaver and Santana will pitch on a Three days rest schedule. Ball gets away from Molina and Joyce took advantage of it. It didn't go far, but Matt Joyce picked up on the fact that Molina didn't see it. Boy, that's a big 90 feet right there. Yeah, it certainly is. The infield is going to have to come in now to get the play at the plate. If you are the runner at second base, you can watch the flight of the ball and you've got to make a quick decision but if you have a good secondary lead you watch the fly of the ball you can move up on a ball that doesn't get very far away from the catcher. 
That's all about good base running, and you've got to practice that during BP. Now the infield is playing in. Ball is blocked by Molina. Well, you're right about anticipation, and Joyce did a good job. We could see it from the angle above third base. He bounced and bounced and saw the ball in the dirt and broke immediately. But if you're not aggressive with your secondary lead, you don't have that far to go. Or if you're you're not anticipating it, yep. you've got to anticipate that ball in the dirt, read it, and if the catcher hesitates just for a fraction of a second, you can move up. You know, the one guy who really appreciates that is the hitter. He gets to hit now with the infield in. Runner at third. He's now got a runner in position for the sack fight. Two and two. Popped him up. On the infield, Escobar behind second. Good pitch by Ledesma. Gets Brignac. Fans, test your knowledge and win additional sharp prizes by visiting the new Hit a Home Run with Shark Facebook page. Great opportunities to test your knowledge and win some beautiful prizes from Shark. Top of the order, Desmond Jennings. Just one for four tonight, but that one was a two run home run. And he raced an early Blue Jays lead. Blue Jays led one to nothing. And then Desmond hit a two run home run top of the third. The ball almost got away back to the backstop. Two outs. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Lind and Carnacion, Brett Lordy. is right to Molina and Joyce is safe boy again Matt Joyce anticipating never hesitated even though that ball bounced right back to the catcher caught Molina off guard yeah it certainly did it looked like originally Jose Molina was going to shovel the ball to Ledesma and then Pawnee had a chance at it watch Joyce the runner at third base good secondary lead he doesn't even hesitate he takes off then Molina sees him coming. He thinks about flipping it to Ledesma to get the out. Tries to go himself, and it's a good call. Good call by Bill Welke right on top of it. You can see him telling Molina he was there, and indeed, Joyce's foot was across the plate. Two wild pitches have led to the Rays' sixth run of the game. It's a five-run lead. Jennings takes a walk with two outs. Bruce Walton, the pitching coach, out trying to help Desmond get out of this inning. Yeah, something happened there when that runner got on base. I don't know if he was staying back over the rubber long enough, but his arm really started firing that ball up and away. Bruce Walton must have seen something in his stretch slash wind up to help him get back down in the strike zone. Two outs. Jennings has great speed at first. Tampa Bay has now matched their total run output in four games against the Tigers. They've scored Six runs here tonight. They had six runs in the entire series against Detroit.
Johnny Damon, the DH. So first pitch strength. Damon's had a tough night at the plate. A couple of strikeouts. Ball on the strike. I don't think Jennings is going here in this situation. Not with the way Ledesma has struggled to throw mm -hmm. strikes. Up six to one in the ninth inning. He's got a very short lead. Naaman fouls it out of play. Yeah, I agree with you. I just think that at this point, I'm just trying to get Ledesma through the night. Mm -hmm. Pierce as though James Shields is going to come back out and try to complete the game. I mentioned Shields has nine complete games. Leads the American League by five. Corey Halliday of the Phillies has seven complete games in the National League. Kelly Johnson throws to Lind and the Rays are finally retired here in the ninth. They had an insurance run. Blue Jays are down by five. James Shields coming out looking for his tenth complete game of the season. Nation New Zealand plays host to Australia. Satanta Sports, over the international sport. Contact your television service provider for more information. Bottom of the ninth inning, the Jays trail by five. And James Shields is back out for the ninth. Adam Lynn just missed a home run his last time up back in the sixth. Had a breaking ball. Might have been down toward the end of the bat. Shields is pitch count. Sits at 108. His season high is 117. Trying to get the complete game. Again, he's thrown nine complete games this season. The Rays offense have scored a total of 24 runs in those nine games. Foul out of play down the left side. Stayed back on the changeup.
Just missed the home run his last time up on an off speed pitch. This time stays back just a little bit better. Keeps his hands back and has got good clean plate coverage. Popping that ball into right field and watch the reaction from Shields. Pretty decent pitch, but a good piece of hitting. Edwin Encarnacion 0 for 3 so far tonight. Takes a first pitch strike. To give you an idea how rare nine complete games are. Only four other active pitchers have had nine or more complete games in a season. The other four. Roy Halliday he's done that four times. LeVon Hernandez has done it twice. CC Sabathia and Bartolo Colon. Again. James Shields goes under the radar. His nine complete games to this point of the season are the most on this date by a big league pitcher since 2003 when Mark Mulder of Oakland also had nine. And when you talk about Tampa Bay Rays pitching, the first thing you hear, David Price. This guy is right there with him. 0 oh and 2. And how rare has complete games been for the organization? Tampa Bay, those nine complete games this year are more complete games than the Rays have had as a team in 11 of the last 13 seasons. I will cut fastball. And Carnation strikes out. Boy, he has had that pitch working all night long. A reminder after this game on Sportsnet Connected on Sportsnet East and Ontario Sportsnet Connected. The White Sox and the Mariners will be on Sportsnet West on Sportsnet Pacific as well. And the Rockies and Dodgers Sportsnet one and the Rockies trying to make one of their patented late season surges. Colorado at the start of play tonight nine games back but they've won five in a row. Brett Laurie. One for three. He homered in his first at bat and then Shields struck him out twice. Shields has 12 strikeouts tonight. It's the third time this year he has had at least 12 strikeouts in a game. He did it against the Florida Marlins back in May. He also got the Los Angeles Angels back in April. Two and oh, one down. A changeup, two and oh. But they five run lead. That's how confident Shields is in his ability to throw strikes with that pitch. Oh, Laurie showing a good eye lays off that pitch. To put Shields season in perspective for you Blue Jay fans. Shields has nine complete games and four shutouts. He and Roy Halladay, who did it in 2008, are the only pitchers in the American League in the last 17 seasons to have four shutouts and nine complete games in the same season. That's dealing. And that's using all of your pitches. The manager shows confidence in you, and you go out there. In this day and age of the pitch counts and the miles per hour that everybody looks at. That's refreshing. Well I think it's one thing Tampa Bay has to do. It's their strength. And you have to play your trump card. And that's their starting pitcher. Full count one out. Broken back. So brisk. Brynja. Safe. Glory has good speed and Tim Sheet at first waved him safe. 
keeps the inning alive, keeps the game alive. I think to double up Brett Moore, it's going to have to be a line drive, one hopper to one of the middle infielders, preferably the second baseman. You're not going to get him. Ball just wasn't hit hard enough. It's turned nicely by the middle of the diamond. Zobrist can bring you out, but Laurie hustles all the way down that line. The reaction from James Shields, he wanted that one. Pitch count up to 121 now. Brett Laurie doesn't give a thing away, no matter what the score is. Two outs. Kelly Johnson takes the first pitch breaking ball. You know, I wouldn't worry about pitch counts with somebody like James Shield because he throws a lot of change ups. It's not maximum effort every single time. The thing that's more tired tonight are his legs. I mean, he really gets his legs into his wind up in his delivery. Takes a lot of pressure off of your arm. That allows you to throw all those starts. Five straight seasons now that he'll have 30 or more starts. There goes Laurie and he will be given second base. No steal for Brett Laurie as the Tampa Bay team didn't cover second. One and two. Popped up. This should do it. Esmond Jennings waits forward in left and James Shields has just completed his 10th game of the season. As he shuts down the Blue Jays on a single run on seven hits and Tampa Bay wins the opener. A couple of home runs by Evan Longoria. Four home runs for Tampa Bay tonight. John Jaso hit his fourth of the season. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Now it's time for Jays Connect with Jamie Campbell, Greg Zahn standing by.